Fantasy Football Hub are currently offering any FPL TV viewer a huge 50% preseason discount on their annual packages. By becoming a member, you'll gain access to one of the biggest FPL communities, with extensive Opta stats, player comparisons, fixture tickers, planning spreadsheets, community WhatsApp groups, and even team reveals every game week from some of the world's best FPL managers. To get signed up and receive a 50% discount this preseason, then simply click the link in the description box below. Hey guys and welcome back to FPL TV. In this video, I'm going to talk you through some of the most common mistakes that beginners make in FPL. And when I say mistakes, I don't mean opinionated mistakes such as taking too many hits, because that for me is subjective. There's many ways to play this game and some players can do very well with a hit taking aggressive style. What I mean is genuine, physical mistakes, where some of the less experienced players may not completely understand the rules of the FPL game. These mistakes are very common amongst beginners and can easily have a negative impact on your season if you don't know about them in advance. Very soon, I'll also be releasing another common mistakes video, and that one's not going to be just for beginners either, but also for the even more experienced FPL players. So if you consider yourself an experienced FPL manager, then keep an eye out for that one, as there'll be some mistakes in there that even you may not know about. I really think that video is going to offer you lots of value. To be sure not to miss that one, then please consider getting subscribed to FPL TV, and then please do hit the notification bell, that way you'll be notified when it does go live. So let's now get talking about these very common FPL mistakes for beginners. The first mistake sometimes made by beginners is not knowing that your bench order actually matters, and should be something you consider before submitting your team each game week. In FPL, if one of your starting 11 doesn't play during the game week, then one of your bench players will get subbed in automatically when the game week finishes. When this happens, I've noticed on Twitter that lots of beginners then get confused on which player from their bench will actually get subbed on, with some assuming it'll simply be the highest scoring bench player. Well, this is sadly not the case. The mistake made here is not knowing that you can arrange your bench as order of priority before the game week starts, effectively giving you a bit of control on which of your bench players can get subbed on first. Whether you're using the mobile app or desktop website, your outfield bench players will be numbered one to three from left to right. And this is the order of priority that you can set before the deadline, one being top priority and third being the last. So be sure to consider this when selecting your team each week and put your favorite bench player in the first position. There is one big caveat to this, however, and that's that the player you set as first sub can only come on automatically if the resulting formation is still permitted in FPL. For example, if you're playing a back three as shown on screen and then one of your defenders misses out, then in that case, your first sub, Dominic Solanke, who's a forward, cannot automatically sub in, because two defenders is not a permitted formation in FPL. In this particular example, it would then therefore be Lewis Dunk as your second sub that would come on instead. The next mistake made commonly by those much newer to the FPL game, and something I often see with beginners over on Twitter, is a misunderstanding and misconception of what the term double game week actually means in FPL. Double game weeks are a hugely important part of the FPL game, and what this is, is when certain teams play more than one fixture in a single FPL game week. For example, there will be occasions throughout the season where Premier League fixtures get rescheduled due to clashing with cup competitions, and therefore those rearranged Premier League games will get slotted into another game week. This therefore gives us a chance to bring in players who will play twice that game week, giving us more chance of big FPL points. Now, the reason this is sometimes confused and misunderstood with beginners, however, is because in the upcoming season, for example, we have Game Week 4 on the 27th of August, and then the Game Week 5 deadline just a few days later on the 30th. Basically, we have two Game Weeks very close together here, with Game Week 5 being in midweek, and therefore some beginners think this is what we're talking about when we use the term Double Game Week. Well, I'm here to tell you, this is not a Double Game Week. Granted, it's a week with double the fixtures, yes, but it's not a double game week. It's simply two separate FPL game weeks very close together, each with separate deadlines, separate captaincy decisions, etc. For some, this will be very obvious advice, but it's important to understand the difference here, because I've often seen beginners asking if they should use the triple captain chip for the upcoming double game week, when sometimes, in fact, it's not a double game week at all. It's two separate game weeks very close together, just like the game week four and five example I've just given. Another big mistake that some new managers make in FPL is a fairly obvious one for some, and that's not knowing that you cannot use two chips in the same game week. So, as you know, in a standard FPL season, we get five chips to use. The free hit, triple captain, bench boost, and two wild cards. But notably, none of these chips can be used simultaneously. For example, you can't use your free hit and then triple captain in the same game week. 
like I said, a pretty obvious one for some of this, and most likely you already know it, but certainly an important one to know for those new to the game, and it's actually a mistake I myself found out the hard way. Perhaps seven or eight years ago before starting this channel, I used my wildcard and built what looked to be a superb bench boost team for that week too, and to my horror, it was only after playing my wildcard that I then realised shortly before the deadline that I couldn't then activate the bench boost that game week, completely scuppering my plans. So, when it comes to making a good chip strategy for your FPL season, do remember, all the chips have to be used in separate game weeks. Whilst we're on the subject of chips, the next mistake made by managers new to the FPL game is not knowing that the wildcard and free hit chips cannot be cancelled once they've been activated, so be very careful with this one. If you're simply playing around with your squad and you click to play the wildcard or free hit and then click save, well, now you've activated the wildcard or free hit, and this can't be undone. Of course, FPL will give you a notification warning before clicking save, and it will ask you to confirm if you're sure you want to play the chip or not. But even so, it's still possible to do a misclick here and mistakenly activate the chip, particularly on the app where the buttons are quite close together. Like I said, something to simply be aware and very careful of. It is worth noting though, that as for the bench boost and triple captain chips, well, these two can be cancelled, providing you do it before the deadline, of course. If you activate your bench boost or triple captain and then click save, not to worry, if you change your mind, you can turn these ones back off in your team selection and then click save again to cancel them. The next mistake made by beginners in FPL is slightly up for debate. Mistake is probably too strong of a word here, but I still think it's something worth considering to at times avoid a complete disaster in FPL, and that's captaining and vice-captaining players from the same team. I think this is something that has risen more to prominence in the past few seasons, with the likes of COVID having a huge impact on fixture postponements, etc. And this is when it did become a bit more of a risky strategy. As we all know, the vice captain is our backup captaincy choice, so that should our captain not feature that game week, then our vice captain then gets double the points instead. Now, the reason that captaining and vice captaining players from the same team then became quite risky is because if that particular fixture then got postponed, you're then stuck with a guaranteed zero points from both the captain and vice captain in that case. Disaster. So, even though we're hopefully getting back to normality now for next season, and this may not be classed strictly as a mistake by some, it could still be just a little bit safer to hand the vice captaincy to a player from a different team, especially during uncertain times at least, like if there's very bad weather predicted during a game week or something. Like I said, not a complete mistake this one, and perhaps a bit subjective, more risk management, and certainly something that can cost you heavily in the worst of circumstances. Something to consider. So that's five very common mistakes that beginners make in FPL. If you are new to the FPL game this year, I hope you'd learned something here, and if so, please consider leaving a like and getting subscribed to FPL TV. You can also hit the notification bell so you always know when a new video goes live. Very shortly, I'll be dropping another video with another five big FPL mistakes, but in that one, I'm going to discuss more complicated mistakes that even some of the experienced players can make. I think that one could be very valuable and surprise you, even if you've been playing the game for a while. Once it's online, I'll show the thumbnail on the screen now so you can click and watch it. FPL responsibly, and I'll catch you very soon in the next video.